call the meeting to order and get us started. We'll do our pledge. And Commissioner Patton, if you'll do our prayer, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our gracious Lord, we ask you to be with us tonight as we enter into this meeting. We ask you to bless us with patience and wisdom to as we contemplate the affairs that will affect the citizens of Beaverdam and we make the most decisions that will be most equitable and fair to all concerned. Be with us, our God and direct us in Christ's name. Amen. Good, Good job. <laughs> Welcome everybody out tonight. Okay, first item of business is approval of the minutes. Yeah, Regular and special. Yeah, I had mine. I, I had a motion to accept the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yeah, I didn't have any minutes. Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, saying? Motion passes. Next item is the bills. Move pay all bills. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Post same. Check on that for next month. Motion passes. Hey, just make a note to tell Shelby. We, I didn't have any minutes in my pocket. Oh. I don't want to embarrass her. Okay. Thank you. Um, nothing under old business. The uh, one item under new business we're going to table till next month, just because I didn't get anything ready. We didn't get it all ready and finalized. Uh, okay. I do have one item of new business, more or less, just for everybody's information. On July 27th, we'll have representatives down here from KLC. We're working, they're going to demo a program, computer program, to go in and do bill pay online, where anybody can pay their water bill, their uh, tax bill, business license, anything they can pay online. Okay. Uh, it's a new service KLC has started. They they designed the whole program themselves, so it is it's geared specifically for cities. Where sales has been the one who piloted the program. Uh, I think I've got all of Amy's issues and concerns <laughs> taken care of about how the money. KLC uh, to verify it cost or the cost. It'll be, fee? 20, it'll be an annual fee of twenty five hundred dollars if we, that's cheap if we take. It. Get that kind of, kind of service, that's yeah, cheap. and it, and that's what they're doing is designing for cities because okay. it is kind of specific. So, like the 27th, July 27th, on a Wednesday, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Okay. And like I say, I'll be, I'll be in San Antonio. Oh darn! Can that's I go right. in your place? Yeah. Can I go in your place? Yeah. You want to set in a bunch of creeks, a bunch of creatures, 12 hours a day. You work. No, no, I just like San Antonio. <laughs> We're going to be down on the river one, though. We will have that good. Nice. Uh, That's nice down there. Okay. Jim, do you have anything? Hmm. Do you have anything? No, Larry's got a little bit of an update on uh, Well, found it good, so. I, don't have, no, I, I have nothing to bring up. You're not going to talk about I'm not going to talk about nothing. Everything. We had disaster over the weekend. It's already cleaned up. We're fine. It's fine. Well, I've got one thing to talk about, but I really need to have a closed session first because it entails some legal stuff. Larry, do you have anything? Uh, new will update. The state has advised y'all find the right. Y'all find uh, the details of that. Hopefully by next month. Is there any appeals process to that? Is there any appeals process to that? I don't think so. Uh, we'll find out. The moment what they recommend or what they statutes that go forth toward us is non appealable. So hopefully I have more information for next month's meeting. Okay. Uh, we will be having a big uh, tournament starting Wednesday. So if you see new people in town from Bowman Green, Scottsville, E-Town. It's a 12U Calvary Pacific tournament. It'll fire up uh, Wednesday afternoon. It'll be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. How many teams? No, it's not uh, Fifteen teams total, I think. And then all 15 will probably play Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, won't they? And then they'll yes, to do pool play? Yes. 
Are they just evening games, or are they? What time do the games start? Are they evening? Or? Six. Wednesday will be six and eight. Wednesday, Thursday will be six and eight. Friday there will be six games. Uh, still start at the same time. And then Saturday they start at eleven in the morning. I think last game will start at six. And then Sunday I'm not sure what time they start. David, do you have anything? Uh, the new air packs are ordered, so what we got this year and last year brings us up to 12. Leaves about eight more to get. Um, also talked to Jason Bullock. He's going to get us another two sets of gear again this year like he has every year. So um, We'll be getting some people size for that. So. Other than that, that's it. And that'll leave us how many? He's getting two more sets, so he'll give you down to six. Six. Six or eight? No, he's going to get a set of bunker gear. Oh, oh okay. Bunker gear. He's, for the last six years or so, he's bought us two sets a year. How's your air packs? Uh, we're up to 12 now, new ones, okay. so we've got eight more to get. Okay. Yeah, and how much are they a piece? I'd have to bring a quote up. It's uh, roughly uh, six, six to 7,000 a piece, something yeah. like that. I knew they were expensive. Anything else? Okay. Chris, Belinda, y'all. Um, we had just a couple of things we wanted to have you guys look at that are kind of impacting our business and our residents um, right here in Beaverdam. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. You can um, read off can you read off your too. actually I said it. I have one more. There you go. Um and I'm gonna let you look over these for just a second just so you can kind of read over them and then um I just kinda wanna give a perspective of where we're coming from and kind of what we're seeking from your all's council. Number three, that you said that the second street alley is blocked off. That, that's not blocked off during bike night, is it? Yes. I thought it was just left on, open. The, on this end. Yes, on one end it is blocked off. It's the portage on, you know. Well, well, and it is, it is blocked off because second they, street's blocked off and closed for yeah. that event. But I thought they left that open so you could go out that way. I, I, I like when bikes, I was here, it was there. Bikes can go out. Yeah. yeah. Bikes can, but the cars, cars can't. Can. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where's your property line at on the back part? Is it goes it directly where right you there. have the barricades? It goes all the way to the alley. But it's, it's where the barricades are, right? Yes. Yeah. We well, no, it's past, our property line actually goes past the barricades that are sitting now, the little triangle. It actually goes past that a couple of feet. We go all the way to the alley. But going this way, going up the edge Main of the, Street. Edge of the building. Is it the edge of the building? Is yes. that the yes. line? Yes, okay. Yes, <clears throat> Any questions for him? The thing that um, I would like for you to do is I know we are here as a business entity, but as you're reading these things and thinking about them, I'd like for you to think about them as your home, your driveway, the road that you have to take to your driveway every day, your trash bins that you put out on a daily basis um, and things that you've tried to do to 
keep people off your property during these events that are being damaged. Because it's not just one residence, we have three up, upstairs that are being impacted. Um, so this is not just a business, our business being impacted, we're actually here to advocate for three homes and residents um, that are having these issues. So I kind of want to put that in perspective is, you know, yes, we are business owners. It is impacting us uh, financially and time-wise, but we have people's homes and their li livelihoods that are being impacted by these things. And so that's why we're bringing it to you to see if we can work together to try to resolve some of these issues um, and to make it a better way for our residents to live and to get through these events. Um, because when the events are not going on our, and the Porta Johns are not there, our, you know, our tenants don't have to take the rough way in the alley. They get to take the easy way in the alley and you know if you're leaving for your job and your vehicle's blocked in because people are not paying attention to the signs that it's residential parking business parking then you can't get out to go to work but i've also seen some and of the residents they don't pay attention that this is a one-way street they come out and go out that way we don't have no choice oh you mean this they side. come out from the they come out from the back and turn and go that way and go yeah. out on yeah, our residents supposed to do it, but that Porter John said that the end of the thing. No, 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 he's talking about coming. When out. you come out of the alley on the second street, instead of turn left because it's one way this way, they turn right and go out to Main and turn. And if you have any issues with our residents, you're welcome to give those to us. We will present those to them and try to address them and help that out. But we're just looking for that to be returned on our favor of issues that we are having too because we don't mind addressing if our tenants <coughs> are having problems you know we can send them notes and let them know to address these issues that's not a problem um, but we would just like that to be reciprocated on the other end of the complaints and the issues that residential living people are having would you like for us to start advertising more? We can do it on social media and stuff about the parking for private parking and vehicles would be towed and that kind of thing. I mean, we don't mind doing that. It just kind of puts a negative impact on you all. I'm just trying not to do that. That doesn't uh, bother us. Okay. Because, I mean, right now, you know, when we know there, there are events, you know, our phone's ringing. We live in Centertown. We're having to drive all the way in so one of our residents can actually get out to go to work because somebody's parked there. We have, we, you know, we've purchased the lot next to ours. We've been trying to grow grass. You will have people that will park, they'll just pull up in there oh. in the lot. We see there. it every day at the park, yeah. You know, and like I said, I would like for it to be looked at, this is impacting homes. Well, I'm going to talk about that too, because and I've done several, so quite a bit of research with several cities. You know, if you go out somewhere and rent or purchase a house next to a chicken house, you know it's there when you move there. By the same token, when you rent an apartment in a downtown neighborhood, especially on a downtown Main Street, where events have been going on for strawberry festivals have been going on for 20 plus years, uh, the sounds on second has been going on for five or six years. Uh, you know, they knew all that was going on there when they moved there. It just is kind of hard for have some people move in after the fact and then expect you to change everything you do around them. I guess my question is, how much are we actually asking them to change? Well, one time I was asked to move everything to the park by you all. Well, yeah, but that's not what we're asking today. We, 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 we came before and presented our stuff to you. Last time we was here, Kevin asked me what more that I could do. You, you made it clear right. that you didn't want to move to the park. Kevin asked me what I could do. I did it. You put the barricades I, I started putting more yeah. barricades and more signs. People still ignore us. And now it's costing us. And we're us, not asking for that much. And now it's costing us money because people, have, because people are tearing up our barricades. Right. I didn't mean to break. Oh, you're fine. Chris. But do y'all have them towed? If we 
hate we that. We have had them cold, but we try not to. We've had them cold in the past, but we like to try to come up here and, and get to the sound booth and say, hey, find this, whoever owns this, because the last thing we want to do is inconvenience somebody by telling them, but we have. Well, it, yeah. it, I, I hate to say that, but I, I was in downtown Covington, had a, had a church there, and it's when it was my church time, the guy in front of me did it. He had them towed. Once they were hooked on to, they had to pay the tow bill. And had them towed, and a few, after a few of them were towed, they quit parking at certain times of the day. If and, we, I, and I, I know you don't like doing that. I, I, I wouldn't know, like doing we, that. I mean, but if you got to do it. Yeah. But we have to do it. If we have an event and we shut, shut it off so people can't go in there and park, shut the alley off so that your guys can still go around and come in the back way, but then nobody can turn off 2nd Street and go in there and park. Would that stop some of it? That's well, the way it is. That's right always now. shut off what 2nd Street. And, and they still come in the back. What we block it on 62 in, and it's let like their resident pick them up. Then we need, a, we need to do a better sign, of, uh, a better job of making sure people know not to park there. Well, <clears> they, they come up. You know, the they barricades the park, that we put up this year, everywhere. everybody, including vendors that were here, tried to drag them out. They did everything in our power. I mean, I screw them things together, every, you know, okay. from one end to the other to prevent them from being moved out of the way because people don't inspect your stuff. No, no they don't. And, that's true. We live with that every day also. And everybody has tried to drag stuff. You know, they'll try to drag it out of the way until they break it. That's what some of these pictures she passed around. They broke up our barricades this year and, and trying to get it out of the way year. so they it's could move in to do whatever business they were coming to do. Is there and a way? On these regular events on Saturday second and Friday night, if, is there any way you guys could put some permanent trash cans in between us More and the because that we can do because they set them out. Yeah. They usually put them back in the building. Yeah. But, oh, okay. no, I have to clean out them toads. The, the, the renters hot. call us and complain. They say, you know, it's full of loose trash. Well, I think it's the city's policy. They won't pick up unless it's all in a bag. Yeah. So I've got to go up there and, and spray out these totes and, and get all the fish all the blue stuff out and it's I mean it's insane they, every bottle beer bottle and when there's cup. not events going on there's no issues you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and we're not saying we're not ta I'm not talking negatively about the events I'm just asking that if we come together and work together to try to come up with some you know some solutions to where you know I, you know, when we have events we can't even go out of town on a vacation or something because we don't you know, we're going to get phone calls, and here we have to drive all the way in. It's costing well, us money. They time. they do announce from the stage on Friday nights about the parking because I've heard them. I've heard that yeah. about not parking back there. Uh, and like I told you, we deal with it at the city park every day. With and, and you're right, they have no respect for anything, and they don't listen. Run over me and you with the sign right in front of us that do not bark on the grass. And they about run over me. Yeah, so on this lift, you know, we we might be able to fix the alley conditions as soon as we can. We'd, well, we'd the alley's get getting money. paid. Yeah, well, no, we've got the, now they've got the drainage. Yeah, we could want trash cans out, but you know it's hard to fix stupid, and that's what we have to deal with. Yeah. I don't know what to, how you fix stupid. Larry, could we get a sign, bigger sign that says, do not park, only residents parking here, violators will be towed or something? You know, when we start buying signs for, yep. for personal property that does not belong to us, that's okay. where we get in trouble. You know, we, we, we have to police around. We can't be policing others. Larry, yeah, I don't even know if that we, would help or not. I'm just we, asking. We will start that's, that's doing bad. more on the if, if it, online our, our right there, he, issues and stuff as far as announcing it. And uh, no, the trash cans aren't a problem. We did not spend money no, for Beef O'Brady's. I'm sick and tired of hearing that. No. That was city property. Is a bunch of fools. We know what that patio is for. If you think it is, yes, you are full. Uh, yep. Uh, yes. Okay, can I ask a question? Beefs. Can we use it? Yes. 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 Anybody yes. allowed to use it? Any citizen can yes. use it. Yes. You are allowed. I asked that. That yes. was the first question I asked. Yes, yes. yes. sure. Yes. That was yes. the very first question you I asked. Was, use anybody allowed anybody. to use that? And they said, All your yes. tenants can use it. That's right. It's there for anybody. The tables yeah. and chairs, that's there. It's not even people very No. no. The, they belong the to the building. Yeah. Yeah. Bike night. Oh, bike night. I thought it was ours. And, they, yeah, they asked, that, question they asked right. that they could leave them up just because they didn't want to have to take them down every Thursday, and then they let them use it for uh, Friday nights, and then they're there if anybody else needs them. So how do we schedule? I mean, I guess that's not been advertised. You, well, well, if you don't have anything. It's a public it's, plaza. Yeah, I mean, it's, a public, it's like anything else public. You know, you can use it. 
Now, if you use a uh, like the amphitheater or something like that, you have to reserve it or the baseball fields or whatever. But I don't think you have to reserve no, that. Well, you might want to call and, 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 and make sure, you know, hey, we're going to have a group out here or something. I, I would just know Friday, your, your Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, you, you have 20 lakes sometimes deliver food over. You have a pizza place to deliver food over. So any, anything like that on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, I would get there early. Uh, if, if you do call the city, I don't know if we can. Well, Thursday, Friday nights, it, it's busy. But with bike night and the it's sounds on second. Thursday nights. Yeah, Thursday and Friday. But on Saturday night, say if you had something like you like you said, you could have people bring you food from the. They do it. They've done it before. They we put uh, tables and chairs in that alley between Keith the Dale Keith Dale and the, in the well. In the that was flower yeah, shop. We did that during COVID we to help did, the cafe. And we have done stuff like that. Before. Yeah. I would just say that you know if that was advertised, that would be very helpful. Well, we've advertised that it's a public facility and public patio. But One no time we had a sign that we took the sign down. Yeah. We took the sign. All we do, all we ask is that people clean up after themselves. That's all we ask because, you know, like you say, you don't want to clean up mess, somebody else's mess. We don't want to either, but, you know, that doesn't always work either. Well, but basically we're asking the city to take some responsibility for hosting all these events. You're hosting these events. These are your invitees. These are the patrons that you've invited to come down here. And we are probably the most heavily impacted business. It would be beat, in, uh, in, the, in the downtown be area of the events that go on, We're, you know. We sounds on second. Signs. Sounds on second is Beaver Dam sponsored, but the bike bike night's not. That's sponsored by a private oh, individual the, club. The bike people. The bike, the hog. What, yeah. what is it called? Hog Valley or something? Hog I don't know. It's called Mafia. Yeah. It's got a name. Hog Mafia. There you go. Yeah. And but they but now the the sounds on second that is put on by Beaver Dam Tourism. Yeah. Well, like I said, we put up more barricades and signs, and it was during the Strawberry Festival when all that stuff got broke up and damaged because that's specifically what we put it up for that, that week of events. And that, you know, we didn't think it was asking too much to have some of those expenses covered by the city since, you know, you guys hosted the event. Because, I mean, we were out over $200 the first year, you know, trying to put up barricade. We took your suggestion. We tried. We blocked the barricade, spent all the money trying to do more to keep people off the property. Well, you're out 200 something dollars. This year we're out 195 because people were tearing up. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't see how, a, as a business, we can keep digesting everything for city-held events. How do you do that? We, we feel your pain because I just got a $4,000 bill on replacing four columns and two sections of gates there on the patio. So, you know, we feel your pain. We have expenses off, off of it as well. Yeah. Our, if you look at our barricades up down here on First Street, but that we're, we're is the city-held event that city is, is anticipating those expenses those costs and we, we're not anticipating the cost. I mean, we feel we had the, the concrete blocks filled full of concrete. The sales are full. No, but if I was having an event myself. Those ones broke in the event though. That was somebody pointing out. Yeah, neither one of them happened in an event. Yeah. If I was having an event on my property and there was damages caused, then yes, I would say I'm responsible and I need to take care of these. But I didn't request the event, I didn't request the hassle, and I didn't request the damage. I didn't. Are you running the Airbnb out of the business? Yeah, we have two rental properties. So some of these events is funding your Airbnb. So if we stop doing these events, well, we're not asking. Well, I'm just yeah, I'm not, I, you know, I'm just saying. We have not said we we're not saying stop the events. We're, we're not saying anything negative about the events. Right. We're just saying we've got issues and we're trying to come up with a happy yeah, issue. You have issues that every other downtown business concrete building owner has. Use it. So, yeah, I understand that. We've got the issues too. But uh, we don't need like three short of a picture of someone actually damaging the barricades, and then it's going to be a civil uh, matter with individual damaging him. But I talked to our KSC legal counsel about it, and there's no way the city can be held responsible for that. Uh, there's no way to know it happened in conjunction with the Strawberry Festival. Oh, really? I seen the Porta John guy out there trying to drag the stuff out of the way, and I seen him pick up a big old board and try to knock my boards loose. Yeah. And I went over and jumped his stuff about it, so that's oh. your vendor. You hired him. But that's still an issue between you and he, and that's a civil matter between you and he, not the city. Yeah. No, it's not. You're responsible for the people you hire and invite down here. There ain't no way around it. Hard. Not according to our legal that's counsel. Hard. Like I said, that's a vendor. I don't know how uh, it'd be just like anything else we do, any kind of event, even from Halloween. He said, okay, Halloween's my egg something. Are you going to be responsible for that? Like, 
So if I have an event at our building and they damage some of your city stuff, you're not going to be coming to me? They are on camera. We got the license plate number. We'll go after them. Not you all. Not you all. There's a lot of people down at the park I'd like to get for tearing the toilet, tearing, tearing the sinks off the wall, but I haven't got them yet. Yeah, so, so we, we deal with it every day, too. It. Yeah. It's not a unique situation. To yeah. yeah, but the city has more funding, and we are business owners trying to make ends meet. And we're, you know, we don't ask for the on your, hassle. On your garbage bins, what, what days are they usually really messed up? Bike night and, and Saturday or for the Friday. Friday and yeah, Thursday and Friday, Thursday, Friday. and then on uh, Strawberry Festival is a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, Strawberry Festival and trash is always a nightmare. Because even your um, the people from the carnival and stuff, they'll dump beers. Like, and they have their own dumpsters too. Yeah, no, they'll come down there and they'll dump in ours. Yeah, that's always a nightmare, trash wise. <clears throat> yes, oh, it is. And it's just disgusting. And it's just disgusting. I'm going to clean it all up. And, you know, and then, of course, you have your residence. And so. On the, uh, the parking situation, and, and I, I don't like being mean either, but more than likely what you're going to have to do is have some folks towed. And I, I know you don't want to do that because that's negative to any business. But we did it as a church. And you, if you think about a business that it could really negatively affect. Of course, I went out every, every week and painted over the graffiti so my kids could go into where their children's church was too and Craig painted over the graffiti on different blocks and stuff. So I, I understand that. Uh, the one thing that it looks like that we need to figure out as much as anything is how to deal with this garbage situation. I, I'm like you. I don't like to fool with somebody else's garbage, and I don't want them in my bins. What kind of bin, What kind of bins are they? They're big old heavy totes that we've got sitting back there at the end. I mean, I really think if there was trash cans in between us and thieves, that people would stop right there and throw it away instead of. Well, that that we can do. And I mean, uh, what day do we pick that up? That's on Thursday. Thursday. Thursday morning. Could we not make an exception on picking those up and dumping them? The, the day no. they pick up the amphitheaters. The day oh, they the pick up. Amphitheaters, that is after the uh, work concert or the function we have. Well, sounds like it's a function, too. It's Thursday night. It's Saturday. Friday night. Thursday I mean, we, we could pick it up Friday morning. I mean, do we make a run no. on Friday? See, it's got to be either Saturday morning or Monday morning because Friday's when they're having sounds on second. So you could have trash from Thursday and Friday and get it all in one whack. I know nobody wants to come in on Saturday and do it. I'm not worried about that, but you don't pick up trash on Monday, though, I know. No, or Friday. Well, even if, on, if they pick it up on Thursday, if they can pick up and dump the... Can they not Thursday, just Not just take Thursday bags only. When they're doing it. Though. Literally pick those. Thursday, How many Friday, of them are there? Three? One doing for doing each? Them. Pick yeah, those three on, up and dump them. But they're doing it on Thursday and Friday. That's that's what they're saying. And well, no, I, I agree with Paul. It would be a tremendous help if they, if the city would just pick them up and dump them in there. That would be a huge help because then, you know, I could just spray them out, you know, every couple of weeks and soak them down. And, and know. just so you know, it's in our lease contract that our tenants are required to put everything in a bag. Yeah. yeah. So they know that their trash has to be in yeah. a bag. Well, you know, we went to the we went to the bag policy, you know, a couple different reasons, but one of them is. You know, you pick up a large tote and, and they're full, you know, they're 100 plus pounds. Yeah. So we're trying to get away from the back injury. It's, it's, it's a bee. Uh, you know, it, it's if they pull the bags out first, and they, they would have to. Yeah. <laughs> they, they would have to. You know, we could pick them, you know, we could try Tuesdays and Thursdays if that would, you know, it, it'd be two days after the. See, I don't think you'd have to Saturday. pick them up on Tuesdays because they're not yeah. going to be filled until Thursday and Friday. I, I'm just trying to get out of bringing the truck out an extra day that we don't ever bring it out. No, that's why I say just do it on the regular pickup date on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Thursday. Would that help you guys? Yeah. 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 So. That would be yeah. tremendous help. If we and had once you take the box out, they're just yeah. pulling yeah. the cans yeah. up and dumping them. On their regular pickup day was actually completely yeah. dumped. Yeah. 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 We, we, 
it, it's not that we're against you. Uh, it, we want to help in any way we can, just like we would any other business owner or homeowner in this city. But even if, if we are limited to what we can do and what we can't do. But if we can help, we will. Won't we? we always have. And the the alley, I say it is scheduled to be repaved all the way through. We did the new storm drain through it. Alley and parking lot both. Correct. The new parking lot? Yes. I didn't know how quick, but the alley I know is going to get it this summer whenever we pave everything else. But see, we, the city has that lot on the other side of the, we're going to do more additional parking there. And I know it's not a, a fix, but if your tenants had to work on the night of the functions, I would say silly and convenience. If, if that lot was blacktop, if they could park, I know it's still not a fix, but at least they could get out. I don't know any other in the city. Outside of making it a gated no, we can't go area. On. We're not supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they'll run over the concrete column, they'll run through your gate. My favorite thing, we didn't see it. Yeah. I don't know how you didn't, how they didn't sit off there. So. But that will help you a little bit. Won't yeah, that'll help. Okay. No, we can't set a record at all. And we are we will do the more trash cans, our trash cans, and then uh, I'll make sure they announce it more from the stage. I know they do because I've heard them doing it. But yeah, we appreciate it. Talk about it more often, and then we'll put more stuff on the social media. Like I said, I just kind of hesitated because I know I see the comments <laughs> people make too. So you know, got broad shoulders and tough eyes. <laughs> You get the word out more, you book. think it might be better to get another year. This first year you've done it, isn't it? Yeah, this first yeah. year. Maybe it's time to expand. Huh? Maybe it's time to expand. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, we thought about it, but I'm real curious what's the Airbnb ordinance? I don't have no idea. I don't either. I'm sorry. What's the Airbnb ordinance? One, we didn't even know there were any Airbnbs until about the last couple of weeks, and there's okay. two of them here. <laughs> and we're working with the state now, and to, again through KLC, to try to come up with something so we can keep everybody in line and legal because there are some issues with planning and zoning. And we're just trying to get everything done to correct. Not everything, you just because you're in a commercial district you autom or in a business district, you automatically get to do something. Some things require, uh, what, what's it called, AB? All the. I'm not sure what you're saying. Oh, on the uh, planning and zoning, if they need a yeah. conditional, conditional use permit. Oh. The, uh, the B&Bs, when I was on that planning and zoning, is a unique situation at times. Because I guess my question is, what is considered a bed and breakfast? Because it's not like you're going to have a bed and breakfast. Bed and breakfast? We don't serve breakfast. No, but it's, it's neither doing a lot of the hotels because I've the other owner in town asked me the same thing. Uh, no, you don't serve breakfast, yeah. but it's still the way our ordinance is written, like on the tan, uh, transient room tax, it's any room that's rented out by the night or for a temporary rental basis that is not a 30 day lease or a right. monthly rent. Uh, and that's pretty much following state statute and state guidelines on that. I just want to make sure because I have a feeling we'll see more and more of those pop up, especially with concerts and stuff. People can have learning. You can make a few dollars, you know, 10 different times, 10 or 11 times, 12 times during the summer at events and stuff like that. You may think more about doing something like that instead of a full rental. Because the guy I talked to the other day, he told me, he said, I'd rather do that than rent the house for the whole month. He said it just fits his needs a whole lot. Needs a whole lot better. Well, I don't. Do y'all do y'all use the actual Airbnb company? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's who he uses. And he was talking about, said, we've never had any issues. He said, of course, they're pretty stringent about how they rate their guests and then how they rate their uh, facilities. And he said, I've never had anybody come in that was a problem or left, like you say, I'm like you. I'm like, what are they going to do to your house? Because I've heard, read the horror stories where they come in and have the big parties and all that kind of stuff. He said, he's never had any issue with that. Yeah. So, but his is in a residential neighborhood and that's something we're going to have to, and we're just trying to get ahead of it before a bunch start coming in. So if it's in a residential neighborhood, they have to get a conditional use permit? Well, according to what they're telling me at Frankfurt, we may have to do a conditional use for both because some hotels require a conditional use permit, even in a business district. Usually not a big deal uh, to do that, uh, but it's just a guideline to go through because it's a little bit different than a normal commercial. When, you think, when they say commercial, they're usually thinking retail. And that's something a little bit different. Uh, I'm concerned because I know a lot of the cities, they've gotten to be really big, and the majority of them are in residential neighborhoods. And that's what I'm hoping the state's going to help us out with some of their stuff they're looking at as far as regulations to allow that, make it a little more easy to be able to do that without a whole lot of hassle from planning and zoning. Because I'm concerned with planning and zoning, if you have to do a conditional use person, a permit, that you get somebody, all it takes is one neighbor doesn't like it, and show up at a meeting and raise enough cane, they may not issue the conditional use permit. And it's, you know, we're naive if we don't know. There's a lot of businesses going on, home-based home businesses. People have no idea there's a business next door to them. And I think, from what I've read, those are pretty much about the same way. A lot of people, well, we didn't know it, didn't realize they're even there. No. Yeah. Uh, because they, Airbnb has really worked to try to keep issues down. They know what they're doing. They're trying to yeah. make sure they have the good people you can trust and depend on and not have to worry about problems with the neighbors. Yeah. But, but that's what that's about. We're trying to catch up yeah. so that everything will be legal and above board if they start more of them start coming up. Now the only question I have left for you guys, do you feel like that we're trying to help? Yeah, I feel like y'all might step in our direction to help out. We okay. appreciate it. Thank you greatly, greatly. Definitely appreciate it. We appreciate you listening and, you know, taking the time. Well, we're here to listen and, and help as much as possible when we can. Because the trash thing will be very beneficial. Because that's, and, you know, when the alley gets paved, to, you know, because they have to come through there so often, that's going to be a lot, a lot better. Try to get that in the parking lot and everything and do a little landscaping with it. And I know Larry, Larry <laughs> loves landscaping. <laughs> and I'm into landscaping and brickwork and metalwork. Good, you can landscape down to pickleball courts. <laughs> hey, Larry. <laughs> he, he said the word, did And we thought we were going to get through with that. Yeah. <laughs> Anything? Okay, can I entertain a motion to go into closed session? Thank you. Thank you. Minute, closed session. Please. I'll, I'll I'll do it. it. I'll <laughs> say it. I'll already moved to go into open session. Yeah, oh, yeah, we've already done that. Now. I second it. Okay. Does anybody have anything else to bring? Make the motion, we adjourn. Let's head out. Second. <laughs>